Welcome back to the Guitar Reliquary. Today, it's all guns blazing. That's right, we are taking a look at the Kramer Tracy Guns Gunstar Voyager. Uh, let me start off by saying I have not uh, listened to L.A. Guns more than maybe once or twice in my life. I think Tracy Guns was involved in Guns N' Roses. That's where they got the guns in the early days. I am not sure about that because I am also not a Guns N' Roses aficionado, though I do think Slash is a very excellent guitar player. So as far as this guitar goes, I bought it purely for aesthetic reasons. Um, really, I would have much preferred to have uh, a wild-shaped guitar like Glenn Tipton's Hamer uh, or some sort of Explorer, but uh, this is what I found at my local pawn shop. And the story behind that is there's a pawn shop in my town that I go to now and then, uh, usually after I have lunch, maybe after I've had a beer or two, which can be a recipe for... Uh, for good times. And when I walked in about two years ago, they had one of these and um, a Jeff Loomis Kelly. I bought the Jeff Loomis Kelly. I did not uh, buy this at the time, but I did kick myself because it was as new. It had all the plastic on it. It came with the gig bag and everything. Uh, so I went back a few weeks later and they had either sold it or stashed it in the back or something and I hadn't seen it since. But it does look like this uh, is the same one in the same condition that it was in two years ago, and so I was able to get a really good deal on it, which was excellent for me because it has many features I like. So speaking of those features, aside from the eye-catching black sparkle ghost flame look, which you likely either love or hate, I personally have owned a few Jacksons with the Ghost Flames. I think the Ghost Flames are kind of cool, especially the gray with the black sparkle on this guitar. But that is covering up what looks to be a two to three piece mahogany body, which is joined to a maple neck. The maple neck has the volute, which I am a huge fan of for prevention of headstock breaks. And it is capped with a maple fretboard, quite obviously by looks. Comes with a Floyd Rose 1000 series tremolo, which is the Korean-made version of the Floyd Rose um, tremolo unit. I have this on uh, at least two guitars, or variants on at least two guitars, with the uh, George Lynch um, model that I had on the channel, and also the Warren D. Martini model that I had on the channel, among others I've had on the channel as well. I find the Floyd Rose 1000 to be a just fine bridge. Uh, some people are really strongly in favor of upgrading it. This one hold to, holds tune great. There's no wear on the knife edges. Uh, it's it's a f you know phenomenal bridge. And I did some pretty significant whammy abuse in the uh, demo, and I thought it held tune quite well. So this has, in terms of hardware, the Epiphone Pro Bucker pickups, which to me might be the weakest part of the guitar. Uh, Pro Bucker 2 in the neck, Pro Bucker 3 in the bridge. Uh, I could not get a sound that I really liked until I put a little delay on it, and then it still was a bit shrill for me, even though I backed the treble off considerably on my Friedman IRX, which I have been using for several videos now. The Pro Buckers are linked to an interesting uh, control setup, uh, so obviously three-way switch up here, but two volumes, a neck volume and a bridge volume, and these coil tap. Now, uh, I did use the coil tap of the neck in the video. I did not use the coil tap of the bridge in the video. It was just too bright for me. These are unfortunately wired via the Epiphone Quick Connect, and I say unfortunately not because there is any tonal uh, lost to my ears, but because it makes it so that I need to replace all the wiring when I replace the pickups, which I definitely will for this because I really like the uh, the aesthetic of it. I really like the way that it plays, the way that it feels, but it does need uh, some pickups that more suit my tastes than the Epiphone 
uh, Pro Buckers. Though that being said, the Epiphone pickups have come significantly far in the last 10 years. Um, some of the older Epiphones that I owned were absolutely unlistenable. You just could not get a tone that you enjoyed. So moving on to other specs of this guitar, it has a 25.511 inch radius, which is a little bit different than the standard 25.5 inch radius of many guitars. It has also a 12 and a half inch uh, fretboard radius, which is a little bit flatter than the 12 uh, that I normally prefer, but not so much so that I noticed a huge difference. Now I did level these beautiful extra jumbo frets on mine so that I could get the action stupid low. It might have the lowest action of any of the guitars that I have in the room right now with no fret out, no buzz. Uh, I, I really am pleased with how that turned out. I barely had to lower the nut because I did the fret level and so that was just a minimal shaving off of some of that uh, to get it to my specs. The uh, inlays appear to be some sort of black plastic. They are not, um, they are not a, uh, an abalone or anything like that, or abalone, whatever the correct pronunciation is. Somebody will definitely correct me in the comments. Has the R2, and I believe it's a BR2 when I took it off. I think it said BR2 on the bottom, uh, which means that it has the 12-inch radius for the, the nut and... Uh, I prefer that to the OFR R2 nuts, which are 10 inch radii, uh, because it more appropriately matches the radius of this neck. Comes with a uh, dual action truss rod, which I enjoy, uh, because that means that it will have lots of stability over time. It is also uh, loaded with the wrenches on the back. I've actually taken one of the wrenches out to do some of my setup work, uh, as you might have seen on Jackson guitars. And then another potential weak point is the, of this are the unbranded chrome tuners, which I will likely replace with some hip shot locking tuners or something of the like. Now, as far as the back of the guitar, it has uh, pl black plastic um, control plates. These two are recessed, but this one is not, which I have complained on the channel before about my preference for a recessed tremolo plate. However, I could just take it off and leave it off. One of the major pluses of this guitar ergonomically is the neck heel, so rather than placing the strap button in the middle of the neck heel as they do on Vs and Explorers quite frequently, the strap button is up here to allow for that nice contour, and I appreciate that much more because it hangs quite nice on a strap. Uh, speaking of, you might think that this guitar would have a lot of neck dive. It actually does not. It has about perfect balance. I couldn't ask for a nicer balance of the guitar. It's also quite light. Um, I think it's probably around seven pounds or so, uh, which may not be that surprising, but you know, with some of the odd shaped guitars, you can get really large weights. So uh, with that, I think we'll just move into the demo uh, of this. Obviously I liked the guitar. I bought it because I liked it. Um, it does have those, those two minor things that I'll likely change over at some point. I probably won't keep the uh, push-pull coil taps. I'll probably do a master volume master tone if I have to rewire it uh, because that's just what I'm more familiar with. Uh, or perhaps just a, a master volume and a kill switch or something fun like that. Uh, the one benefit of having the two volume knobs is you can do some of those uh, strobe effects like uh, Zach Wilde and Tom Morello and, and others who, who use the neck pickup off and the bridge pickup on to create sort of a kill switch type effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, one last thing, the input jack is on the lower horn as opposed to the upper horn, which is uh, different than, say, a flying V where the input jacks are generally on the upper horn. I think I've covered everything here. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them, but check out the demo for now. Let me know what you think.
hope that uh, that demo gave a good representation of the gunslinging axe that I'm holding right here. Please, please, please check out my other videos. Like, subscribe. Thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel. I'm nearing 500 subscribers, which I'm very pleased about. Uh, when I started my channel, I really didn't think anybody would like any of the music that I played uh, or the things that I did. So seeing that there are some like-minded individuals out there is excellent. So thank you very much and enjoy your day.